Joshua Hamlin with Sigma 3 Survival and today I'm going to show you how to make a primitive crossbow. I'm going to use this to make the bow, this as the stock, this is going to attach to the end okay. of this. What I've done with this piece of cedar is just tillered it, not really great, just real quick, I probably spent 10 minutes on it. Now I'm going to put a string on it. Okay, so I cut my knocks in. I tied the string to it. That might not look like a bow right now, but that is tight as shit. And this is going to be high power. So the next step is to, first off, I got to get this side flat and smooth, and I got to get this cut to shape. So we'll just set the bow aside for now. I'm going to cut this side flat because that's where the arrow is going to fly across it. You can't have it being rough. It'll rip your string up. And you see there's little knots and stuff here. I'm going to cut it shorter and try and get the straightest section I can get out of it. Okay, there. I have shortened this piece of cedar. I've flattened down one side. This is the side that the arrow is going to go on. The next thing I need to do is make a groove down here. And this all has to be smooth. I just, I just chopped this flat with the gherky. I still need to smooth it all out with my knife. You can't have these rough edges. It will ruin your string because your string slides across this. Um, so what I'm going to do now is smooth this out, kind of groove it down towards the center. Um, and I'm going to groove this end in a little bit so that the bow can sit there easily on the end. Okay, so what I've done now is I just carved a little groove. It's not much just enough that the arrow will sit there in it. I smoothed out the sides, cleaned it up a little bit. Um, now we need to carve the trigger. To do that, we need to know where we need to carve it. So we'll just set this on here, pull it down. Be very careful, because it will hurt if you let it slip. Okay, so the trigger needs to be right in there. This is where I can pull it comfortably. I want it to be farther than I can pull it comfortably. So I'm going to put the trigger right in here. And I'm going to show you this part in detail because it's complicated. So I'm going to get this all out. What I'm going to do is cut in about a third of the way here. Then I'm going to cut in about a third of the way here. And then I'm going to pry out this piece that's in the center. Now this part is tricky, and it takes some time, and probably a rock, or this thing will work. I'm just going to set my knife here. Alright, what I've done since I last saw you is drilled through here this is the string that's this is where the string is going to go through to hold the bow onto the end of this stick i've drilled through here i used a combination of the bow drill and my knife to get through these once i got through i squared them up on the bottom side of this one i elongated the cut so the t is going to go through here sit right here arresting against this when you pull the trigger down this elongated cut it's going to turn forward when it turns forward it's going to release the string the string's going to hit the back of the bolt and shoot the arrow so what I got to do now is make the T that fits in here and I got to tie the bow onto here we don't have an arrow yet so we got to do that um, also I found some feathers I found a little bit of pine sap growing on one of the pine trees over there so we'll make us a bolt as soon as we get this thing set up
Okay, so I carved the little T. Um, I, I want to show you in detail, it's hard to see on video, but this has to slope forward. If you look at it from the side, maybe you'll see that this slopes forward like this. This goes into this notch like this. Right here I have a spot where the string will sit right on that line. Then this will go into the notch here. The string will wrap around right here. Then when you pull the trigger, you're leaning the string forward and it should come off, slide across the top of this with the pushing the bolt and shoot out the front. We also have to put something on here just to hold the arrow. And I'll carve that next, and that's easy. It'll only take a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just cut this little piece. It didn't take me more than three minutes. What this does is you tie it on back here and it holds your arrow so that it doesn't fall off. Um, it's not real important, like you could balance it, but if you turn sideways at all, your arrow's gonna fall. It also helps guide the string right down the, 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 the line and right into the back of your arrow. So I'll tie this on with a piece of paracord right here then I'll tie the bow on. We're about done. We almost got it. So I'll be back in a few. Okay, so what I've done is tied this thing on. Notice it's loose. It's just on there to hold the arrow. And I tied through this hole the bow onto here. Now how you set this, of course we don't have an arrow on there yet, but you pull this back under that thing over this T. You've got to be very careful when you set it down. It's really sensitive. Boom, and it's set. Of course, there's no arrow in it. So, we need to go make an arrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, we got hit by a big storm. Knocked down trees. Just snuck up on us. Um, I got drenched. I had to change my clothes. But our crossbow is done. As you've seen right before, we got hit and we just need to make a bolt. So I went over and I found this stick. It's it's not real straight, but it's almost straight. And it's close enough, at least for me to show you. There's lots of great arrow making videos out there. Um, if you're going to shoot this a short distance, you don't need to fletch it. However, if you want this to go any distance at all, you're going to need to fletch it. Otherwise, the back of the arrow is going to be moving faster than the front, and it's going to flip over in the air, and then it'll be flying like this, and your point will be in the back. So, I'm going to fletch this. I'm just going to use a little piece of paracord here, and I'm going to pull these little strings out. I'm going to use one of these to fletch with. I got a couple feathers I found over there a little earlier. Look like chicken feathers. Robert has some chickens out here. So, first thing I need to do is split the feather. Notice that I carved a little knock in the end of my arrow, so I have to be careful where I put these feathers. Can't just put them anywhere. They have to be flat. So, I got it right in the low point of the knock. Grab one of these strings. I just wrapped it around a couple times because I got to put another feather in here. So I'll set that these off. Justin, let's see. Alright, it's looking good. Let's give it a try.
walk with me. <coughs> How about we shoot into this big pile of leaves here? Just so you can get an idea of what kind of power this thing has. That's it, primitive crossbow. This thing will come loose a lot. It's, you want it to be loose, but because you want it to be loose, it sometimes will fall off when you fire it. No biggie, just grab it, pick it up, put it back on. Um, what's the benefit of a crossbow over a regular bow? Hey, check this out. The benefit of a crossbow is one, you can sight down it, which makes it easier to aim. Another benefit of it is, is that you can set it in traps and you don't have to be there. I would still, I think personally I would prefer to carry a regular longbow if I were out hunting or anything, but I love this for traps. You can set it up with a trip line that connects to this trigger, something trips the line. Of course you kill people, that's very illegal, but if you're trying to save your life you got to do what you got to do. Let's do it one more time. Let's fire it one more time. Let's give it a distant shot. I hope I can find that. All right. Primitive crossbow. Thanks for watching.